Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm on the road again. You know, I just can't wait to get on the road. Um, we are literally a month and three days away from the NFL draft. I can't believe it. Just talking to my man, Game Time Brian. We have our, of course, room reservations. If you, if you haven't gotten a room reservation for the draft, um, if you're trying to get anywhere downtown, it's either going to cost you an arm and four legs or uh, you're not going to find it. It's literally insane. I'm glad that we actually, I booked it about a month and a half ago because we got it. And we are um, basically, if you've ever been to Detroit, there's the people movers that go around downtown, goes to like Ford Field and the famous theater and um, down the historic district uh, to the waterfront uh, with the Red Center and all that, the Joe Lewis Arena and everything else. We're inside of that and that's where the draft is. So I think our hotel is like uh, a little over half a mile away. So it's like within walking distance or the people movers away. And we're gonna be there the day before uh, so we can try and figure out exactly where we want to sit, you know, give you the sights and the sounds of the NFL draft, and I hope you guys tune in, because it's going to be great. Um, I'm sitting here, and, you know, I try and get inside the head of Jerry Jones and the Cowboys front office to try and understand what's going on. You know, we got Stephon Gilmore, who played well for us. We gave up a fifth-round draft pick, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. That's not as much as um, we gave up for Amari Cooper and gave up on him after a few years. Um, so it's not that we can't go through. I mean, when you think of what the Rams did when they brought in Von Miller, I think they gave up a third for him for half a season. So the grand scheme of things, it's not as much as we think it is. And so maybe it is that they're moving on. But here's where, when you look at the free agent players that we lost. On the offense, of course, we lost Tyron Smith. We lost Biotis. We, we all knew we were going to buy Biotis. We wanted to upgrade at center. And Brock Hoffman is a guy that they believe in. And so it may be they say, well, Brock Hoffman, we're ready for his era to start. And that may be the case. And they didn't want to pay Biotis the big money because, you know, he was okay. He was a pro bowler for a year, but, you know, not so much. And Tony Pollard, of course, you know, that's a big chunk of change, and you're kind of disappointed on it. And the Cowboys typically will run a running back in the ground and let him go. You think about um, DeMarco Murray. DeMarco Murray being run in the ground and let go inside of the big contract with Philly was the fourth-round pick that we got to get Dak Prescott. So there's that. So I wasn't expecting them to bring back Tony Pollard. Um, so those are the three losses that you've had on offense. The defense, on the other hand, you've lost a lot. When you start thinking about Nabal Gallimore, when you think about Dante Fowler, when you think about um, Dorrance Armstrong, um, think about Hankins, and possibly um, Stephon Gilmore, you've gotten rid of a lot of people on that defense right now and the question is is why is it they didn't believe in any of these guys now I have been I'm trying to be rational and maybe I should try and say I'm a rational Cowboys fan some of y'all will probably disagree with that I liked Hankins and I thought Hankins played pretty good although you know the Raiders basically let him go because his production had gone down we picked him up because that's a value type pick the Cowboys would have. And he was taking one year deals uh, at basically the veteran minimum. And wasn't the same player. He's going to be 33 years old. So, you know, I'm looking at it saying he was the best interior run stopper that we had. And they're not bringing him back. Well, maybe they look at it and say, yeah, he was. But we need to do better. He's getting older. The question is, when we let all these guys go, I know you don't want to pay Dorrance Armstrong $15 million, and I don't think we should have paid Dorrance Armstrong $15 million. 
um, when Dorrance Armstrong signed his extension with us, and they said his production was right there with Randy Gregory, most fans, including myself, killed Stephen Jones for, you know, kind of saying that. But the reality was he was actually right. Um, Dante Fowler was basically on the scrap heap when the Cowboys brought him in. So you can find those type of guys. But the real thing, and the reason may be, is for the Cowboys to change what they're doing with those guys is the influence of Mike Zimmer. We don't know that Mike Zimmer wanted those guys or looked at those guys as a fit for what he wants to do. You know, typically when you hire somebody in a position, you know, coach or, you know, an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator, and they'll say, you're going to run a 4-3 or a 3-4 and so on. Well, the NFL has kind of changed a lot. I'm not going to say that it is fantasy football-esque, but you know how in fantasy football, you go ahead and you're going to start one guy this week and then somebody else the next week and you're moving and changing and all that. It's not quite that simple as that, but you're seeing so many players that are being plugged in one year and then replace the next that now the next iteration of the NFL, it's not where you got a quarterback and he sat on the bench for you know two, three, four years learning and then he ends up playing. It's like plugging that guy in right now. So now you see that teams are plugging in guys, boom, and changing completely what they're doing in one season. And it may be that that's where the Cowboys are looking because Dan Quinn's idea of defensive players is different than Mike Zimmer's. Dan Quinn, as he likes to put it, he wants his guys to be fast and physical. Fast and physical. And typically, they're taller, leaner guys. Okay, they're 6'4", and you know, maybe you know, your edge rushers are 2, 240, 250. You know, or your defensive tackles are taller guys that are skinnier that can move fast. And I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. But the problem with that, of course, is I like short and stocky. Okay, short and stocky guys have a lower center of gravity and are harder to get off the block. It's harder if a guy is close to the ground and a butter ball than it is if a guy's real tall. Because a guy that's real tall, his center of gravity is up there. So it may be that the Cowboys basically are wiping the slate clean on the defense with the exception of the secondary, which has been pretty good. You have to look at the Cowboys' secondary over the last couple of years and see where they've been record-breaking in interceptions and covering and have done better than any other phase of our defense. We know linebacking core has been lacking since uh, the Wolf Hunter and Jalen Smith, uh, his rookie year in 2018, where Jalen Smith was really good that one year, got, got, got the bag of money, and Leighton Van Der Esch as a rookie came out with 140 tackles. But after that time, we've had problems at linebackers for years. Um, the defensive line, they've been trying to address it, but they still haven't gotten it quite right. They've realized that interior defensive linemen are important. They tried with Quentin Bohannon, who was a big body that I guarantee you that um, Mike Zimmer would have liked to have had. They tried with um, John Ridgway, another guy I wish we had kept. I still, to my in my mind, don't understand why we got rid of them. And then you have Mozzie Smith, and Mozzie, of course, um, they tried to get him to lose weight. That was Dan Quinn. He wants him to be fast and physical and lean, and that's not Mozzie's escape. So you've got Mike Zimmer, who likes to have the big bodies that are in there. He likes the guys, not just big, sloppy, and fat, but big, physical guys that can punish you in the middle. So maybe that's the reason why so many of these defensive players are going. Offensively, Dan Quinn 
excuse me, Mike McCarthy is want, going to want to go through and keep as many of those pieces that he had because his only problem was actually being able to run the football. So keeping the Jake Ferguson's and keeping the Brandon Cooks and the C.D. Lambs, you ended up having 36 TDs and nine interceptions. You want to keep the consistency there. The only thing you want to try and do better is, or where you can have room for major improvement, is actually running the football. And so upgrading the offensive line that hopefully will keep, you know, from giving Dak, you know, giving up 39 sacks is where you want to upgrade. And you want to look at running back and say, we're not getting the value back for the money we're spending on running back with Tony Pollard. And we don't want to spend $8 million for him. So maybe there is a plan there. And maybe that's the reason why we've seen so many of these guys not re-signed by the Cowboys. They're not going to fit Mike Zimmer's game plan. Could happen. So I'm going to be doing some work in an old farmhouse. This is going to be sad for me because a very influential person in my life, Alex, passed away um, about six weeks ago. And this is their house. And so to be there without my friend Alex is going to be hard. So, yeah. Um, don't have the Wi Fi password, so. I don't know how well we'll be able to upload or get the news on the Cowboys and things today. So, if I'm missing an action, you know why. Alrighty, good people. I appreciate y'all as always. Peace.